Hey, you ever wondered if you have what it takes to be a disciplined person? Well, stick to the end of this video and you might find out. Let's go! Before we get started, I wanted to personally thank everyone who supported and shown interest in our content. We are growing fast and we cannot do it without you. We love and appreciate you all, but if it's not for you, please go ahead and share our channel to someone who might need this. Follow us and catch me live on IG, TikTok, and Facebook for motivational content. Take a look at our merchandise and support the cause. So look for us, tune in, and let's have some fun. Chapter 12, Discipline. Let's remember that when you hear this sound, it's time to pay close attention. In the last chapter, we talked about what it takes to maintain a relationship, including loving yourself first, having good communication, trust, support, loyalty, honesty, respect, patience, forgiveness, fairness of time, compatibility, responsibility, accountability, and awareness. Now, of course, these are just some of the very important components to maintain a relationship and create a balance between the members. We talked about the importance of physical space between the two parties, where this can sustain your individuality and avoid being in a dependent situation. Decision making can cause anxiety and we need to know what our options are and when doing nothing is a better choice. Throughout the writing examples displayed, we should have gotten a sense of how many times our emotions get in the way of moving forward and growth. We use the example of the glass being half full versus half empty to take it a step further and think outside the box. We touched on being jealous versus territorial where your relationship is an investment and must be protected as well as monitored. We talked about how our expectations are our standards and how we must hold everyone accountable to respect them, including ourselves, by establishing boundaries. We ended with practicing ethical behavior and how it supersedes etiquette when used as a facade in public. We need to achieve control to master these skills and supply all the demands of a relationship or any goal we want to reach. And for that, we need to be disciplined. Understanding discipline and being disciplined are two different things. So, what is a disciplined person? Understanding something gives you the sense of clarity and makes for good conversation, but it will be limited without applying it in real life situations and gaining the hands-on experience that comes with it. Discipline can also be training people to obey rules or a code of behavior by using punishment to correct disobedience and it can also be a branch of knowledge, typically one study in higher education. If discipline is used to punish or penalize someone too aggressively, it will most likely achieve negative results. The goal is to enforce obedience and to strengthen our moral character but not to cause resentment or grudges. In this case, we will try to focus a little bit more on exercising self-control. So let's talk about some types of discipline. Discipline can be used to prevent, support, or correct certain types of unwanted or unnecessary behavior. Preventative. Our constant need for validation presents challenges that can cause interruptions in the process. There are methods and activities that will reduce or avoid specific problems that we face and unfortunately for some, it is experienced daily. The goal is to protect our state of well-being and promote desired outcomes. To prevent certain behavior, we need to establish standards with guidelines so you know in advance what to expect, especially during the first days of habit forming. To be proactive means you must prevent any type of disruptions or excuses. When we master the skill of prevention, we have now formed the trait of responsibility and this lowers the chances of experiencing those embarrassing moments where we must be accountable by owning up and apologizing for our mistakes or wrongdoings. So, who likes to apologize? Why wait around and prepare for something to happen? In that case, you are training yourself to react. If there is any way you could avoid it, you really should. Why enable what is inevitable? Instead, we should find its origin and stop it before it forms. 
Here we must dig deeply, so stopping at the roots alone is not going to be enough. We need to know what planted the seed to eliminate the connection completely. We must trust the process. When we are avoiding unnecessary moments in time, we allow ourselves the gift of life. I call that living above the norm. Supportive. Discipline is essential to obtain patience, emotional intelligence, and processing reliable information fluently to comprehend and gain knowledge. When we include the opinions and thoughts of others, our path becomes that much more challenging. In Chapter 10, Love Yourself First, we stressed how important it was to be selfish at times for personal growth. I am not saying that other views are not important. We must pick and choose our resources wisely. Only the beneficial information from others should be considered, but without discipline, how would you know what is helpful and what is a waste of our precious time? Most of our support should come from our inner self. This is the person that you need to trust more than anyone else, and like stated before, who knows you better than yourself? To benefit from this, we must be totally honest, practice objectivity, and stick to the facts. Being realistic is not enough in this phase, so we must keep it real before we practice this validation. We must be careful not to toot our own horns before it's acceptable, so why not avoid them totally and instead reward yourself in a subtle manner? We should treat ourselves the way we want to be treated by others. We must establish a good relationship within ourselves and work in our inner struggles. Say without question that we love ourselves. Respect your standards. Listen to our feelings and do not be afraid to face them. Most feelings and emotions are meant to be temporary, so why keep them around? We need to reward ourselves for our accomplishments. So speak positively and refrain from words that establish hatred, envy, or jealousy. The best type of support is self-support. If you are going to use outside sources, do not be afraid to question the reliability of the information presented to you. Corrective. In order to correct anything, you need to be aware of its existence. When you do become aware, you evaluate your options, choose a different course of action outside of the norm, and you must then monitor or self-police the actions until they become consistent or habitual. In the case of correcting behavior, we need to know where this is coming from and what positive action to take after strategizing. Giving ourselves undivided attention allows us to focus on what is happening in the present and will lead to what is in front of us. Get in contact with yourself and learn who you truly are, how you function, and what works best for you. Mastering these skills does not come from thinking or talking about it by itself. It comes from practice understanding, and accepting that you will make mistakes, which gives you an early advantage and a balanced mindset. You should encourage errors and learn from them to handle adversity more effective and efficiently. Discipline should include the elasticity of resilience to recover quickly from tough situations. Once you've decided to do something, you need to be persistent and not give up. Continue to do it, until it feels natural to form good habits and this is considered consistency. There will always be fine-tuning in behavioral adjustments and the amounts will lower within time. If you avoid holding grudges against yourself, then you will lower the chances of overreacting. The same way I explained earlier that you shouldn't be quick to toot your own horn or not brag at all, you must be sure that you have completed the task at hand before moving to the next step. It takes a certain amount of energy, motivation, and determination to successfully correct behavior and it will never happen without discipline. Can discipline be considered a strength? Disciplined people can plan further ahead and execute without fear of mistakes because they know they can bounce back at any moment. They can achieve this with great accuracy and ease. They prefer to know what is expected of them clearly. They are not easily distracted and know what it takes to get things done. That sounds like a superhero to me. What value comes from being disciplined? We can train our mind to focus on our goals and to control our emotion. It does not stop with establishing a positive mindset and the actions that come from them. Discipline allows you to do what needs to be done and done right. For instance, a carpenter always measures twice and cuts once. 
after a certain time, they don't need to measure anymore, but do it anyway to validate their measurement by eye. What is so special about being disciplined? People who are disciplined can concentrate, which embodies focus. They work in unison both mentally and physically, so their ideas and goals are always aligned. Their productivity level increases in every activity they participate in because they rarely waste time or are sidetracked by emotions. When you are disciplined, you are in control. What does discipline have to do with life? Discipline creates the rules necessary to live your life efficiently and effectively. Disciplined people understand that you must make small sacrifices in the present for a better life in the future. The only reason they go to the past is for reference and avoid making the same mistakes twice. We must remember that our past is not a life sentence, it is just a life lesson. Your character and your personality are influenced by your habits and habits create routines that become who you are day in and day out. What happens when you do not have discipline in your life? Lack of self-discipline will lead to failures or difficulties such as financial troubles, issues with mental health, relationship problems, obesity, clarity, decision-making, strategizing, stability, and future vision. The ability to be disciplined eliminates uncertainty in many cases. This leads to self-confidence and self-esteem, which will build inner strength. Consequently, this will lead to satisfaction and true happiness. Why is it so difficult to be disciplined? Being disciplined takes a lot of work, and that work must be done in the present. Everybody wants the benefits now, but this is work in progress for the benefit of your future. The common person is usually waiting to be led, needs some type of help, and eventually a handout. So they get good at making excuses or pointing fingers. There are things in life that we must utilize effort along with a strong sense of urgency necessary to succeed. For us to live above the norm, we must be disciplined in many areas for us to recognize and truly enjoy love, peace, and happiness. What role does discipline play in leadership? Good leaders are not easily caught off guard or unprepared. They can maintain elevated levels of concentration regardless of their other priorities or requirements while multitasking. Self-discipline allows leaders to give their full attention to the task at hand without undermining others. The number of interactions can be overwhelming to a novice leader. They must be poised and control their emotions constantly. Good leaders notice when they need to flush their mental toilets and reset. These skills require discipline. How do disciplined people act? They are committed and true to their word. They are responsible. Temptations are avoided because they understand it is hard for anyone to resist. Taking care of their health is a top priority. They know the risk and impact of bypassing their well-being, which can affect their mood, performance, and relationships. They work on removing unhealthy habits by developing good habits and know that it takes time to do so. They set standards and boundaries. They know their limitations and the value of time management. They know when to say no and don't want to do things that encourage distractions. They create as well as perform routines and stick to it, which is the foundation of discipline before they get caught up with something that they know will distract them like reading emails they will do what is important first like exercise or training before they start so they can start their day with a clear and open mind they do not waste time thinking about what they are going to wear they choose their mind over their feelings their mood does not influence their actions their goals are clearly defined. They know that if a goal is unlikely to be achieved, if it is too vague and not specific enough, they respect deadlines and their calendar is their Bible. They give themselves strict timelines and use completed tasks as markers to monitor their progress and keep them on track. They are goal-orientated 
and practice SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. They can pass up immediate rewards in the pursuit of greater long-term gains. Finally, disciplined people have a backup plan even though they rarely need one. So, is there a difference between self-control and discipline? Discipline refers to the mind's ability to command the body with conscious judgments about conduct, whereas self-control is concerned with how we react to emotions to protect our bodies and egos whenever we feel we are under attack. Some benefits of being disciplined include higher rates of achievement and success, overcome addictions, eliminate procrastination, higher satisfaction of accomplishments, and develop a powerful sense of acuity. So how do you improve willpower? Some people call this the self-control muscle. You have to exercise regularly and feed your body the nutrition, which is the right food, especially those foods linked directly to better and enhanced brain functionality. Keep that metabolism going. Work on your stress levels by setting realistic and achievable goals while developing your own reward system. Now you can add new challenges. What are the negative effects of discipline? Many studies have shown that trauma related to physical punishment can lead not just to physical injury, but increased aggression, antisocial behavior, and many other issues with mental health. These results require the closure of understanding that it was not your fault. Nobody deserves that, and you are not alone. This can lead to PTSD, and if so, you will be riddled with heightened triggers, and in some cases unaware of these attributes that contributed to your character and current personality traits. What can cause lack of self-control? Family history of mental illness that can be hereditary. Personal or family history of substance abuse and addiction. Pre-existing mental illness left untreated. Being the subject of physical, sexual, emotional abuse and or neglect. What part of the brain controls discipline? The prefrontal cortex is the part that helps us with things like decision making and regulating our behavior. It is in the section of the brain located right behind your forehead. So how do we fix lack of discipline? You can start by forgiving yourself and accepting that nobody is perfect. Contrary to popular belief, we must realize that discipline is not an illusion. It is a concept that can be tangible if we place the proper levels to it. This is something that can be practiced, and we discussed this all the way back in Chapter 1, Levels for Balance. Discipline is a common concept, but few become great at it. We should focus on the motivation behind why we are pursuing the goal or habit. We should keep it simple and enjoyable. Now repeat positive outcomes and merge this with a great attitude and you will be well on your way. Can you be successful without discipline? Thinking that discipline is the only way to attain success is a myth. You may totally lack self-discipline and still become successful. But no one becomes successful without a plan and the motivation that carries the plan forward. The focus that you need starts with practicing relevant consistency and you need discipline to carry that out. Let us not forget that we are all individuals and we all have a unique perspective based on our culture, beliefs, and experiences. These messages are not intended for everyone, but for those who choose to live at a higher level, we choose to live above the norm. The vocabulary word for this podcast is acuity, which means possessing sharpness or keenness of thought, vision, or hearing, which is something we should all desire and work on. Now, here's the good part, and listen while I try to pronounce all these words uh, that are related to acuity, okay? Here we go. Awareness, brilliance, guile, ingenuity, insight, intellect, intelligence, intuition, judgment, sensitivity, 
shrewdness, vision, wisdom, wit, acuteness, astuteness, brains, cleverness, comprehension, cunning, discernment, discrimination, farsightedness, grasp, keenness, perception, perspicacity, refinement, perspicuity, sagacity, sharpness, smarts, understanding, good taste, and percipience. Now, some common opposites include ignorance, stupidity, mistake, denseness, ineptness, insensitivity, misinterpretation, misunderstanding, inability, or obtuseness. Let's go! I want to thank everyone who is following us and has become part of the Ormiga family. We love and appreciate you all. As you know, we have a deep admiration for those who genuinely want to grow and live above the norm. We are here to offer enlightening information about life and its many challenges. We also offer an array of business consulting strategies to maximize your work production, promotion, marketing, and to lift the spirits of your company staff. We also offer personal consulting through our life program. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitch for daily motivational content and chances to win cash and nice prizes just for tuning in. Right here on YouTube for our show called P.S. I Love Me. Now on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Subject to change, so tap in and check out the weekly schedule for the showtimes and events.